Those eyes in the mirror I would recognize anywhere. My brother's tree that he planted years before he planted himself is awash in light that robustly proclaims his vivid, if persistently mysterious, presence. My grandparents, Henry and Rachel, whose voices are perpetually, perpetually murmuring sweet, sweet nothings in my heart. Look, I say to all of them, the cousins and the outside children too, because all of my brothers actually had outside children, I have brought friends. We sit content and munch our veggie salad and forbidden potato chips, sitting serene amongst your graves. Sitting serene amongst your graves. You are silent. A granddaughter, my niece, who cares that your graves are kept clean as she has always known them, lowers her shapely form to rest on an army veteran's tombstone. So many of you, I had not noticed this before, went off to fight strangers, returning wounded, dead, or strangers yourselves. You were quiet too as we sit munching our lunch. But are you really dead? Are you really dead? Are you not perhaps the reason I have no enthusiasm, patience, or admiration for war? Amen. You, the poor, dispossessed cannon fodder, safer behind the mule you left than behind any gun. My friend Pratiba, her name means genius in her original language, which is Hindi, brown, Indian, British, with an accent that would have made you laugh as your own southern country accent amused many. Films us all sitting, talking, eating, laughing, being with you as you play dead. Later in the van, leaving your place of enchanted rest, we marvel at who life has put into our vehicle old friends by now, really because of you. There is no other explanation, though you may continue, you may continue your little afterlife game of playing dead.